Hi, this is Kimberly. We're talking today about Piece of Shit Grouch, the evil bobblehead step martyr from Colorado Springs. She's now an arrestee for the suspected murder of our little boy Blue, Gannon Stout. Her resulting situation is she has been ejected from her friends, her relatives, her home, her beloved phone, and basically life whilst awaiting and enjoying her right to a speedy trial. Well, bless her heart when not being used as a genuine expression of fondness or sympathy for someone, the expression, well bless your heart, can also ironically be utilized as a big ol' fuck you. We ended the last video with some of the empty lies that Piece of Shit Grouch reported to investigators. That a Hispanic man, known only by the mononym of Egardo, had ambushed her, held her at gunpoint and assaulted her, raped her, demanded a suitcase, and then abducted Gannon. I've nicknamed this asshole Egg. Piece of shit claimed that on the day before Gannon went missing, on Sunday, she had met this Hispanic man named Egardo while driving around the neighborhood. Was she just out driving around when the internet didn't spit out a new man for her? And poof, there one was. He was working at a nearby construction site, Letitia said, and she asked him to help her take care of some carpeting that Gannon had allegedly ruined with candle wax. And I would like to reiterate, that does not look like a burn to me on those pictures that are floating around. It looks like blood. It actually looks like bloody diarrhea to me. And I am, of course, making reference to a picture that's been floating around on social media that allegedly piece of shit took to show where Gannon quote-unquote burned the carpet. Bullshit, bitch. Piece of shit in the stage persona that she's attempted to display to the outside world is going to be the one that sinks her own ship. All that nonsense and foolishness that she's concocted and insisted to be true, just to prove how righteous she is, virtuous, justifiable, those things that she feels has demonstrated her to be an upright, decent, and worthy individual, those will be the very things to do her in. Mark my words. She just cannot stop herself. Her brain shuts down, and the duck lips and jaws just keep flapping. Was her mom an alcoholic? Because if that's not fetal alcohol syndrome, I don't know what is. The arrest affidavit states, Piece of shit made statements to investigators that could be considered exculpatory in nature, related to the presence of blood in the basement of their residence. Investigators that were inside the Stalk residence on January 27th, 28th, and 29th declared there was no odor of smoke and no evidence of smoke. In fact, one detective noted the basement smelled like coconuts and was very pleasant. You know, I can just see it now. At trial, the prosecuting attorney will neatly lay out every single wild, inconceivable, unbelievable story that Lyaria told. And of course, they will hand out safety face shields to each jury member first. Because, you know, when you're having a conversation and the other person inadvertently spits on you and it lands on your face, the face shields are out of an abundance of caution. But... What if some of that runny liaria shit spittle got on you? Jury members would be losing consciousness on the spot, hurling on one another and holding on to the nearest solid object so they wouldn't get blown away. It would just have a ripple effect throughout the courtroom. People would be falling out everywhere. Better yet, face shields and hand sanitizer should be distributed at the door for all who enter the courtroom. To wrap it up with a tidy, neat bow, the closing statements, the prosecutor will play that video, that piece of shit claims she accidentally recorded of Gannon, that heart-wrenching one where she made him do a pinky promise. But it will play for the jury at the end of the closing arguments, right before doing a mic drop and walking off. Perfection. Boom. Life in prison, if not worse. But... After a complete waste of time trying to corroborate the claims, detectives dismiss every cock and bull story of piece of shit's new friend as false and misleading. I bet they hate having to be all professional and shit in their reports and having to pursue all of those fucking wild goose chases. Dear me, I'm jumping ahead. Let's get back to what had happened was on January 28th, 
2020. That is the day we're focusing on for this video. The day after Gannon quote unquote went missing and perhaps ran away from home. If you're new, please don't expect me to stick to the topic at hand. I wander and shit. During the first 24 to 48 hours surrounding the disappearance of a child, it's reasonable that a seemingly innocent parent or step-parent would be contributing to search efforts and fully participating in the effort to recover the child. As you'll remember, investigators believe piece of shit lied about visiting neighboring homes while searching for Gannon. She was unable to provide the location of the homes she claims to have visited, along with the names of any of Gannon's friends that he was supposed to be playing with or otherwise that afternoon. The afternoon he was reported missing. For a quick overview, in the 24 to 48 hours surrounding Gannon's disappearance, piece of shit rented a vehicle, turned her cell phone off for approximately four hours on the evening of January 28, 2020, washed her Volkswagen to Guan immediately prior to coming to the El Paso Sheriff's Office for an interview, evaded law enforcement's attempts to conduct a more in-depth interview, and did not participate in the search for Gannon. This does not equate to what I would deem a distraught stepmother who had one of her children go quote-unquote missing while under her care. If the thought of being a step-parent does not appeal to you, step away from that relationship. Don't let it go as far as getting married. Damn bonehead move. Think about it. The very early morning of Tuesday, January 28th, the day after Gannon was reported to be a possible runaway, Batty is up and at him bright and early again. Three internet searches right together at 4.15 a.m. and then another at 4.36 a.m. I'm sure she needed to do a once-over on the basement in Gannon's room before she left the house, too, just in case her husband examines the downstairs closer than the deputies did. I wonder what she did with the area of what Flea termed the carpet burn. Then she needed to haul ass to the airport in order to rent a car and pick up Albert. If we're to believe what is in the arrest affidavit, poor Gannon is in the trunk of guilties to go on. 4.15 a.m. Let's read some text messages. Three in a row starting at 4.15 a.m. What is the process for our runaway child? Police steps for our runaway. Police steps for our missing child. Then a few minutes later, today's flight, Oklahoma to Colorado Springs Airport. And of course, she often does her little signature where she will put a period mark in place of the space bar. 4.15 a.m. Investigators applied for and were granted a search warrant for piece of shit cell phone. A physical download was conducted and investigators were able to recover the data, inclusive of text messages, call records, the specific times her cell phone was unlocked, battery levels, and other information. In summary, investigators learned that piece of shit lied to her employer, her husband, her friends, her daughter, and the children's babysitter. Now, the search warrant was applied for at this time. I don't think they did the physical download. She still had her dumbass phone. The arrest affidavit states, quote, I will not include each and every text message or lie, end quote. There are messages that would otherwise tend to cooperate piece of shit statements about Gannon's whereabouts on the afternoon of January 28, 2020, if, in fact, he did go to play with his friends. As discussed in other portions of the affidavit, Arrestee's story was false and misleading, and these messages were likely sent as part of a larger plan to support her initial lies about his disappearance. Yeah, if her jaws are flapping, she's lying. Or if her fingers are moving across that keyboard of her phone, she's lying. Bitch has liaria. It's a chronic and permanent disease for her. For example, on January 28, 2020, at approximately 5.14 a.m., Piece of Shit had a conversation with Stephanie, the children's babysitter, saved in Piece of Shit's phone as Stephanie Sitter. 
This is some, but not all, of their conversation as portrayed in the arrest affidavit. 4.15 a.m. Piece of shit texts a babysitter. Quote, this happened after 3.30. We talked to him then, told him to be home by 6. Sitter said, someone posted he wasn't at school either. Piece of shit lied. He had to go to the doctor for his stomach, but he was here in the afternoon. Sitter said, where did he say he was at? And piece of shit said, honestly, I don't keep up with his friends. Now that I believe to be a true statement that Montrosity did not keep up with Gannon's friends. She had no interest in him, I think. All she wanted was Al, and then she didn't want Al because Al was sick of her. Oh, excuse me, I deviated from the arrest affidavit and timeline once again. There is no indication that Gannon ever went to a doctor, and Guilty never brought that up with the investigators. According to a news story on Fox 31 Denver, the babysitter was trying to help clear piece of shit's name after an interview with Colorado Springs TV station KKTV sparked backlash online. Oh God, I hope nobody got any liaria juices on them. Pisa had received significant criticism after that interview, the one with the back of her damn cousinette head to the camera. The babysitter said, quote, with the interview, she just doesn't sound like she was hiding anything. That's just the way she is, end quote. The babysitter said, I would be losing my mind too, but I think she's overwhelmed. You think? The babysitter, Stephanie Kane, says piece of shit had nothing to do with Gannon going missing. It's all mind-blowing, she said. I think she's innocent. She's not the type of person that would do anything like this. She never even spanked those kids. She wasn't the one that would get on to them. Albert would do that, end quote. Well, let's just throw Albert under the bus on national TV, okay? Kane had just moved to Oklahoma in mid-January, but last had contact with piece of shit shortly after Gannon's disappearance. Kane babysat for the Stalk family for about a year and became friends with Pisa. The Fox 31 reporter asked if Kane believes there is any way piece of shit could have harmed Gannon. She said, and I quote, I don't know. I don't know. I'm saying... I don't think, in my personal opinion, I don't think so. I just don't think she would ever do something like that because she's a friend, end quote. Okay, well bless her clueless little heart. That Fox 31 Denver News story will play at the end of this video, the one that features the Stalks babysitter running her mouth. She must have caught it from piece of, piece of shit. 8.17 a.m. Piece of shit's internet activity captured the search for a rental car and she visited the website Priceline.com at 8.17 a.m. This is consistent with the 2019 Kia Rio from Avis Rent-A-Car in Colorado Springs. Fall T was unable to provide a logical reason as to why she rented a vehicle while she still had access to her Tiguan. After all, it hadn't been impounded yet by law enforcement. The timing of the rental of the Kia is suspicious and, combined with forensic evidence later obtained from the Tiguan, tends to place additional importance on why Pisa Shet felt compelled to rent a vehicle that morning. Investigators located no evidence that the Tiguan was not mechanically functioning or noted any reason why it could not have been physically driven. Arrestee told her husband, Al, that she was concerned about putting mileage on her Tiguan lease, which is why she tried to justify the rental. That is stupid as hell. However, she only put about 71 miles on the rental, so yeah, it's stupid as shit. During the time she had this rental car, she refused to disclose the location of her Tiguan, and Albert never saw her Tiguan. She told Al her car was, quote, near French elementary school. Oh my God, it had to be maddening living with her. Again, stupid. Okay, well, we've already established that. I don't need to keep saying it. Police and Al looked for the car, but never found it. Later, it was discovered to be in the short-term parking lot of the Colorado Springs Airport. Well, that makes sense. Did they even check the airport? I mean, that's where she rented her car from. Picked up Al. I mean, that seems like that would be the place to start. 
and now we know that it had Gannon's body in the trunk. She retrieved her car at 7 p.m. that night. She, of course, could not pick up Albert in this car for obvious reasons. Why the hell wasn't someone tailing her? 8.30 a.m. A receipt shows piece of shit renting a 2019 Kia Rio from Avis Rent-A-Car in Colorado Springs. A parking receipt was found at the Tiguan from January 28th from 8.30 a.m. until 7.02 p.m. And it, of course, was parked in the short-term parking lot at Colorado Springs Airport. 8.48 a.m. Piece of shit texts Harley to pull her car, the white VW Jetta, into the garage on Tuesday, January 28th via text message, presumably to temporarily cover up any potential evidence left behind. Harley has her own vehicle that is the Volkswagen Jetta. 8.50 a.m. Piece of shit picks up Gannon's father, Albert Stauk, from the Colorado Springs Airport in the Kia Rio that she rented that morning. Then she stops at King Super's, Wendy's, and then heads back home in Lorson Ranch. And for those not familiar with it, King Super's is a grocery store. Albert Stalk had been on a work trip with the National Guard for the previous three days. Arrestee was unable to provide a logical reason as to why she rented another vehicle while she still had access to her Tiguan. She told her husband that she rented the vehicle because she was concerned about putting mileage on her lease vehicle, the Volkswagen Tiguan, but investigators called the timing of the rental suspicious, according to the affidavit. Piece of shit Grouch kept her vehicle parked at Colorado Springs Airport with Gannon's body until the evening of January 28th when she picked it up to dispose of Gannon's body. She thoroughly disgusts me. 12.29 p.m. Case turned over to the El Paso Sheriff's Office investigators. 12.57 p.m. Piece of shit used her phone to search, can Nintendo find my switch? Investigators surmise this reasonably occurred because she was contemplating how she would dispose of the switch. Investigators conducted their own Google search for this and learned that the switch does not come with any sort of tracking ability. As such, piece of shit likely felt like it was safe to dispose of the switch and use the missing switch to help deceive law enforcement into searching for Gannon as a possible runaway. 4.04 p.m. Investigators asked Piece of Shit for Gannon's toothbrush to recover his DNA. 4.18 p.m. Google search. Carnet Volkswagen. 4.19 p.m. Pisa just flipped the fuck out and texts Al, quote, they are asking for our son's toothbrush but said nothing is wrong, end quote. At or about 16.31, which is 4.31 p.m. to 4.33 p.m., Pisa Shit has paranoid text conversations with Mr. Stout. Pisa, something isn't right. I think they're hiding something. Owl says, who, the police? Pisa says, yeah, they asked for toothbrushes. Owl said, hmm, what do you think they're hiding? Paranoia was setting in. Can you imagine the thick-ass tension going on in that house? It was more than being able to cut it with a knife. One would need, at bare minimum, a hacksaw. Line 188 of the arrest affidavit says, Pisa has not provided a fully truthful statement to investigators at any point during this investigation, particularly regarding the circumstances of Gannon's disappearance. This would reasonably be suspected activity of an individual that committed the crime under investigation, namely murder. Within approximately 24 hours of Gannon being reported missing and without external prompt, piece of shit made up claims to law enforcement that she was being set up. The evening of January 28th, at no specific time, the historical cell site analysis identified unusual activity for piece of shit. Everything about her is unusual including potentially disconnecting her cell phone from the cellular network for several hours. I submit by disconnecting the phone, piece of shit intended to prevent law enforcement from being able to determine her location. Specifically, this occurred on January 28th during the evening she disposed of Gannon's remains. 
7 p.m. Piece of ship picks up the VW Tiguan. She left earlier that morning at the Colorado Springs Airport short-term parking lot. 7.02 p.m. Receipt shows piece of shit leaving the airport. This information matched the timestamp of the January 28th Colorado Springs parking receipt. The arrest affidavit states in relation to this time, quote, investigators recover limited GPS and location data from Piece of Shit's phone. There are crucial time periods, such as the evening on January 28th, that investigators were not able to recover location history because Piece of Shit disconnected her phone from the cellular network, or she turned her phone off. 8.08 p.m. The Tiguan raw data indicated it stopped near King Super's parking lot for approximately 10 minutes after leaving the airport between 8.08 p.m. to 8.18 p.m. Special Agent Donati was able to review video surveillance footage from that King Super's, which indeed showed a dark SUV matching the description of the Tiguan sitting in the parking lot during that same time period. Can y'all tell this is where I got tired and needed to go take a break? It was. Other footage, including video footage from a Wendy's restaurant in a separate location, helped to further corroborate the raw data. Of significant importance, the raw data showed the Tiguan in the area of Highway 105 and South Perry Park Road between the hours of 9.11 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. on January 28th. And if you'll remember, they did a lot of searching in this area. And then they called off the search, I guess, when it became apparent that piece of shit had removed Gannon from that area. The raw data also indicated the Tiguan stopped for approximately five minutes in an area approximate to the recovery of Gannon's blood on February 15, 2020. Investigators were also able to compare Piece of Shit's historical cell phone data against the Tiguan raw data and found no reason to believe that Piece of Shit was not the driver of the Tiguan on January 28, 2020. Between 8.30 p.m. to 10.20 p.m., location data from the Tiguan shows the vehicle was in the area of Highway 105 and South Perry Park Road. Investigators were able to determine some of the locations of the Tiguan on the evening of 28th. This was confirmed by the AT&T CarNet feature on the Tiguan between 8.30 p.m. and 10.20 p.m. This is where investigators believe piece of shit disposed of Gannon's remains. During this time period, Harley's cell phone is connected to a tower that would service the Stalk residence over approximately 30 miles from piece of shit's suspected location. There was activity on Harley's cell phone during that time, and investigators did not believe Harley was with piece of shit when she disposed of the body. Why the hell wasn't Fleabag being followed? So, in short, from 9.16 to 9.28 p.m., data from the Tiguan shows the car driving into the rural area near Highway 105 in Perry Park Road and then driving out. The raw data also indicates the Tiguan stopped for approximately five minutes in the area approximate to the recovery of Gannon's blood on February 15, 2020. At 10.26 p.m., Harley's cell phone leaves the Stalk residence and goes to the area of Powers and Carefree where investigators suspect she picked up Letitia, her fleabag mother. 10.45. Piece of shit enters into what I believe to be a state of psychosis. I truly think she lost touch with reality, and I'm not being a smartass when I say that. Or she's a big old pathological liar pants, and she can't keep her jaws from flapping and her fingers from clicking. Click, 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 click on her goddamn phone. I wonder if they had to do a surgical extraction to pry it out of her stubby little hands. She can't stop. Where's her fucking off button? Now she's texting law enforcement. She has an inability to relax, to shut off, and now she's being argumentative. Her mental state is one for the books, indeed. I guess she was feeling all bold and shit after disposing of Gannon's body. In the middle of the cold, dark nowhere. 
Her mental state is one for the books. She displays many features of many health problems. Or she's possibly abusing drugs. That will be another video. Getting back to the night of January 28th. This is a good one for those that study the mind. Here you go. See if you can figure this piece of shit out. Oops, I deviated again. Anyway, 10.45 p.m. Pisa made a statement to investigators via text message. At the time of this statement, Gannon had been missing for approximately 27 hours and piece of shit believed she was a subject to focus in his disappearance without any prior prompting from law enforcement or notification as such. Piece of shit said, quote, What do you want from me? Because I have nothing. One of your very own leaked to me what you guys were doing. I did nothing and or I'm being set up. I'm not really even sure other than being told by another blue with El Paso. I was told I couldn't go home to sleep and on top of that men were sent to to a home with a minor female and she was forced to stay there and not even leave for food. Every conversation that said even this moment I can hear inside. What do you want from me? End quote. Okay, you're going off the rails, bitch. Detective Bethel said, quote, come in and talk to me. I would just like information to find Gannon. End quote. Unknown time. Gannon's biological mother, Landon Hyatt, arrived from South Carolina to Colorado. She spent most of the nights speaking with law enforcement. And honestly, I would like to raise hell and flip out for a moment for about how the way this arrest affidavit reads. Jumping around, repeating shit and repeating shit and just using a few different words to say the same damn thing. And if you aren't careful, you miss something. The goddamn sequence is all out of order and shit. I hate shit like this. It reminds me of the corporate world where I spent all damn day fixing other people's bullshit because they didn't know how to be clear and consistent concise and all sequential and shit when they would do a report. Well that's it. I'm gonna slam off to fucking bed now. I will pick up in the next video with Wednesday, January 29th and I mean no disrespect to the detective that did this arrest affidavit. Well maybe I do just a little bit but this shit would not fly not even in high school. Thank you. Amen. And I will pick up with Wednesday, January 29th in the next video. I'll do so when my brain recovers. This damn arrest affidavit being all over the place does not mix well with my CRS and no sense of direction. I need a break, like a warm, sunny, tropical island with a huge drink with one of those little umbrellas, that kind of break, with no one talking to me and no one asking me to read shit that is all out of order. Bye, Lapisa. Much love and peace. Thank you for listening. It's all mind-blowing. Stephanie Kane just moved to Oklahoma mid-January, but last had contact with Letitia Stauk, Gannon's stepmother, shortly after his disappearance. For a year, she would babysit overnight for the Stauk family whenever they went away and became friends with who she calls Tisha. I think she's innocent. She's not the type of person that will do something like this. What is she like? I mean, like, she wouldn't, she never even spanked those kids. She wasn't the one to get on to them. She always let Albert do that. Kane is trying to help clear her friend's name after this interview touched off serious backlash online. She didn't sound like she was hiding anything, you know, like, that's just the way she is. People from across the country following the case, some criticizing her social media posts. I would be losing my mind too. I think she's overwhelmed. Kane says Letitia may not have her phone and she thinks she deactivated her Facebook last night. You just think that there's no way that she would have done anything to him? I, I'm not saying, like, I don't know, you know, like, I don't know, but I'm saying that I don't think, my personal opinion, I don't think so. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think she would do something like that. I mean, like, cause she is a friend.
can t Kane can't tell us what she said to investigators, but says she's had several calls with them. As for the latest in the search with the sheriff's office here, we just got an interview with them a few minutes ago. They say they've had about 382 tips now, and here's a soundbite from what they said when they spoke with us. Well, we did have some searches happen in some very specific areas based on the tips and the leads that have been called into the tip line. And so, again, that is going to continue. Uh, the, the tips and the leads keep increasing. And so sometimes those lead to other leads and we follow those until they are all exhausted. And they want to reiterate, don't send them your leads through private messages on Facebook or on social media. You should send them directly to the tip line. They are going to chase them all down, and they have not slowed down at all at this point, which the sheriff's office is happy about. Reporting live in El Paso County, Nicole Fierro, Fox 31. All right, Nicole, thank you. For well, Jim, this document was originally leaked to a social media site online. Then the court released it publicly. We are told that the information in it took a lot of people by surprise. Charged as the killer of her stepson, the court document spells out in detail why investigators believe Letitia Stout murdered 11-year-old Gannon in his own bedroom at this home. It claims the boy was either shot hit with blunt force or stabbed. Photos show where blood was found on his mattress, an electrical socket and elsewhere. In January, the stepmother insisted to KKTV in Colorado Springs that the boy ran away. My main thing is I would never want someone to think that I would hurt Gannon or any of the children in our home. A security camera on a neighbor's home showed Letitia and Gannon leaving home on January 27th with Letitia returning later alone. The affidavit also contains a map from a GPS that was secretly placed on Letitia's car. It shows an area north of Palmer Lake on January 28th, where searchers later found a board with Gannon's blood. The investigation also revealed the stepmother's internet searches. One was for, husband uses me to babysit his kids. The court document claims Letitia Stauk later changed her story that Gannon had run away to that she was raped by an intruder who then kidnapped the boy.